Welcome to this remote control quick tip. In this quick tip, I want to talk about the placement of the flight controller on your quadcopter frame. Now, this is something that a couple of subscribers have managed to get themselves in a pickle with, and I want to explain this so that if you're thinking about building a new quad over the Christmas period, then you won't get caught out in the same way. So what we'll do is go through it and we'll start with our very basic frame here. So we have a standard kind of 250 racer style. And what we'll do is we'll draw a couple of lines in between all the motor mounts to get a rough idea of the point around which the craft is going to turn. So if we use the rudder on this craft, it's going to turn roughly around this point. And that is a natural place to have our flight controller, the center of gravity. So if we put the flight controller right on top of that spot, or as close as we can get it, then what happens is as we actually fly the craft, the flight controller gets a very clean sense of what's happening with the model. So next rotate the craft a little bit, and what happens is when we rotate the craft, you can see that the flight controller is rotating in exactly the same way to exactly the same amount, and all it feels is that rotation, so we're all good. But sometimes it's very tempting to try and put the flight controller away from that centre of gravity. So in this example, we've pushed it right up into the nose of the craft. And to be fair, I flew some of my original H-copters that were a little bit bigger like this because I was running out of room with some of the electronics. And I managed to get away with it because I was using APM. But some of the more modern flight controllers don't like this. And let me explain why. So now what we'll do is we'll actually rotate this craft in exactly the same way as we did before. But this time, if we rotate the craft around its axis, the flight controller isn't just feeling the rotation, it's also being pushed to the left. So it actually feels two things. It feels the accelerometer input of going left. It also feels the gyroscopic input of being turned to the left as well. So the flight controller will then try and take care of both of those feelings when actually in theory, it should only be feeling the rotation, not the accelerometer movement to the side. And that's what can sometimes cause problems. Now, it doesn't have to be absolutely spot on, but there are a couple of other considerations when you're mounting your flight controller. First of all is look in the documentation and see whether an anti-vibration mount is needed. Some flight controllers are more finicky than others. I found that multi-Wii, the old 8-bit boards, some of them were really finicky about vibration and you had to put them on some kind of anti-vibration mount if you had any kind of dodginess regarding your props or motors. New ones like the Nazi 32 CC3D tend to be a little bit more forgiving. Uh, distance from any electromagnetic fields. Make sure your flight controller is nice and far away from anything that's going to be transmitting. It is a little computer essentially and you need to give it a little bit of respect. So don't stick it right by some high current, high power piece of electronics. Make sure that where you can try and space everything around on the frame. I occasionally see this in new builders stuff too. It's very tempting to make the cable super neat and to have everything just long enough so they make the connections they need to. That can transfer a lot of vibration and unintended movement via the connections and the pins into the flight controller and that vibration could be picked up depending on the sampling rate as a movement that the flight controller then tries to correct for. Leave a little bit of slack and any vibration that's coming up those wires won't make it all the way into the flight controller. If you have a flight controller that isn't in the right spot and I had one subscriber who was really struggling and it turned out that actually flight controller was installed on the mount for the Mobius at the front of his 250 racer and he just couldn't get it to fly properly and all he did was then simply moved the flight controller from that back down into its correct position in the middle of the frame and it worked beautifully. You can get away with small deviations from the ideal position. Those little extra movements that the flight controller sees don't tend to cause a big problem. But if in our example, you're right at the other end of the frame, hopefully you can now see why that isn't a great idea. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.